and the taste of putrid and rotting meat. What then was music created for? Was it to drown out the voices of others, or the voices within ourselves? I think I know. I remember, when I was still a child, how I was plagued by the voices in my head. The voices frightened me, bringing me to tears nearly every night until adolescence, and as such, I was always dehydrated. I lived each day, dreading the night to come when my limbs would be seized by heavy paralysis. The voices break loud and louder and louder until I didn't hear you if you were shouting in my ear. I'll be enough. I wouldn't believe these voices of mine to be real enough to warrant looking into, and so I had no choice but to find some way to overcome this nightly terror on my own. As long as I live, I will never forget the night when I lay in my bed and screaming for help, sobbing and covering my ears and having tales to use and ears off, I tried the only thing left. I played music in my head. I played the most beautiful piece of music my eight-year-old mind could comprehend. Papa Bell can indeed. Of course, to most people, this work has become as trite and empty as the bride wearing white, having played at a wedding at mommy. But to me, it was the sound of heaven. All the planets aligned, all the spheres throughout the entire universe moving together in perfect accord. And even though anything so utterly perfect always made me cry, it didn't matter. Canon indeed was the sound of making sense. And it might have saved my life. In the battle between musical order and terrifying chaos, musical order won out every time. And every night this war was waged, and while the voices didn't stop coming to me, I had my secret weapon, and I applied it swiftly, letting the glorious endless repetition of canon and D unfold by the blanket that covered the voices and smothered them inside. The battlefield of my sleep was thus occupied until I first began to believe, and by then, the voices were